How are you doing? This is Martin from Guidance for Life. So this is the third out of three videos that we're making in a little series to show you how we're putting together this little vegetable garden of ours. And uh, we're thinking of calling it Pizza Garden because the beds actually kind of look like pizza slices. Or maybe Sun Garden because actually the bit in the middle looks like the sun and the rays coming off it. But anyway, we're going to um, put, make the paths in this video and we'll show you how we did them. It's actually quite straightforward. We're using wood chips and um, we're going to plant um, all 12 beds up with uh, some annual vegetables and some uh, uh, winter vegetables as well, including tubers. So uh, enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe because we're going to have lots of uh, update videos uh, coming up in the next few months and hopefully um, harvest videos as well uh, in a few months time. Now I've just measured the four uh, middle pieces or the crosses where the main paths will be going across the new garden using our big long measuring tip. I've got this clothesline or I could use builder's line which I also have here to make um, a line going from this rock over to here. Well, we do like um, having fairly natural shapes in our gardens and not just pure square and straight lines. Okay, here's a relatively straight line. So what we'll do now is we'll simply walk on it just to compact the compost underneath a little bit. We could scrape the compost away. Now we simply just walk on it like that. As you can see here, it leaves this path behind, which you can walk on once more. And you can see then you can actually put the wood chips down into that, which we'll do in a minute when we have them all done. I found this is easier than trying to scrape the wood chips away perfectly, because the plant roots can actually utilize the space underneath the paths and also the pad itself is a very fertile place and it actually also holds moisture for the neighboring plants which is exactly the reason why i was never a fan of um, raised beds it's the same problem that charles dowling says as well with raised beds you always have um, a problem trying to keep the moisture in on the sides where the wood is and plants don't grow as well on the edges Whereas our plants near the edges or near the paths usually do even better than all the rest of the plants. Okay, you can see here, shaping up nicely. Don't worry that it's not perfectly level. We'll get to that now when we use the wood chips. That's about it and we'll do that in a crisscross uh, fashion so that we'll uh, make our beds in between the paths then and we'll try to make them just big enough to have it a fairly productive area not to waste space but also not too big that you cannot reach into the middle anymore now that's all the paths done check it out it's all kind of uh, crisscrossing so when you're getting wood chips it's best uh, not to bother with uh, bark mulch because it's expensive and it's just one of one type of tree it's only the bark literally there's no needles and leaves and uh, wood in it basically when you're getting uh, wood chips it's best to get them from a tree services company or from um, an arborist as well uh, I'll show you some here we got some fresh ones here yesterday and you can see here there's a lot of green material in them but they'll be okay that'll dry out and um, this is actually ash I was told so this is the whole tree all in one and that will actually break down over time too and feed the soil and it will also um, of course um, keep the moisture down as well even though it will only be on the paths in this garden um, it will do a great job at that and it won't house the slugs like many people think so when you're doing the paths on the outside the path that's facing the grass here and also the chickens as it happens in this case we you need to make sure that you put the plastic up on the sides just like that here so I'm probably about four to six inches or 10 to 15 centimeters just beyond the rocks because otherwise the grasses here on the other side will grow into the rocks and into the wood chips and ultimately into your garden beds 
so just make sure that you do it and um, you can still remove the plastic at a later point when the grasses have died back completely or even um, add on to the garden on this side here so you basically simply you could take the rocks away and shove or just shove um, a bit of cardboard underneath here and lay it flat and um, at some point in the future if you want to you can remove the plastic when the grasses are all dead and just uh, replenish the wood chips a little bit here's the wood chips so basically you just put them about maybe 10 centimeters in thickness so you can uh, use your feet or your hands or a rake my rake is actually in the wood chip pile at the moment so um, basically just continue on from these wood chips as you can see these ones have gone completely uniform in color and completely dry there is no more needles and leaves in it and it's no longer decomposing these wood chips here the fresh ones are actually quite warm at the moment already even though they were only cut back yesterday or cut down yesterday <music> How am I going to cope with this many plants? I think we're going to need more space. We're probably going to need another, a whole another garden just to even accommodate all of these plants and have them at the proper spacing. But in any case, um, the new garden will be full anyway, one way or another. So we have some yacon, that's white yacon. We have some apios, which we're actually new to since about a year and a half ago. Uh, it's a ground nut. It's a really nice tuber that we're trying to propagate. We have several different varieties of potatoes here. These have been chitted in the greenhouse, as you can see here. They're already fairly well established and they've got roots. You see that there? We're going to separate them and uh, plant them. So they should take off straight away. Uh, some onion sets. Um, Stuttgarter giants, I think. Yeah, Stuttgarter reason and red barren uh, we also have some beetroots some black tuscany or nero kale some leeks uh, blue variety these are cauliflowers um, we have some waltums uh, calabrese broccoli we have two different varieties of ulicus it's a type of variety of potato a little bit like a potato but a different plant they come from the same region actually a couple of echinaceas white echinacea plants right here they should do nicely as uh, to attract um, beneficial insects these are something very special that we got uh, just recently these are egyptian walking onions so they just basically form a bulb at the very top and then fall over kind of tip layering like uh, a bit like blackberries and vining plants they tip layer and then uh, all the seedlings on the top of the bulb actually sprout so um, we're very excited about egyptian walking onions so we'll get those going purple sprouting broccoli they'll be grown over the winter uh, or grown until the winter and left there until springtime and then they're gonna flower we'll eat the flower heads before they uh, go to seed these are some uh, florence uh, uh, fennel bulbs or bulb fennel so um, we usually have some of those in the front garden just as a perennial and we use them for um, uh, basically for medicinal purposes just the leaves taste nice and you can put them make a tea from them to soothe the stomach as well so fennel actually if you don't harvest the bulb they become perennial and you just basically let them grow year after year and they grow to about two meters tall we have some Plenty of red Russian kale right here. 
a pole tray and there's actually another tray uh, just over there these are mixed color uh, beetroots that i got from klaus and sligo and uh, we have durham early cabbages kind of soft leaves on them this is portuguese kale i know we're not going to have space for all of these but we'll give plant a few anyway we have a few rhubarb plants i'm being ambitious here hopefully we can um, have a bit of space for those too this is kohlrabi it's uh, i think the variety is um, delicia or something like that i can't remember it exactly it's probably on the label more black tuscany or nero also known as dinosaur kale because it looks kind of like from that era these are some purple potatoes that we got from a friend and um, here is some um, canarian potatoes only four of them so let's see how we get on trying to propagate them and here are some more yakons this is uh, new zealand red is the name of the variety a really nice one uh, actually the white ones are even better for yields and for flavor there's very little flavor of yakon anyway but they're a really nice crispy uh, vegetable to have in the winter time a um, bit like a fruit a bit like eating an apple but with uh, very um, juicy and very um, kind of crunchy these ones here are uh, cinnamon vine is the name of this for, uh, vegetable it's actually a Chinese yam or uh, it's a perennial potato from China and it grows for about three or four years and typically they harvest it after that then now we have a lot of courgettes we have about we ended up with about um, probably four varieties of courgettes at this point uh, here's one of them it didn't grow particularly big in the greenhouse there's some more over here they're a bit bigger as you can see i'd say they withstand the slugs no problem um yeah so what are we going to do with all the courgettes last year we had like five or six plants and we had way too many courgettes as you do when you, once it happens would better to have too many courgettes than have none at all there's even a book written um what am i going to do with all these courgettes is i think is the name so these are ochas or oka as some people would call them the leaves look a bit like um, clover and uh, they're in the woods the sorrel family actually they're related related to the wood sorrel so they have a um, bit of a lemony kind of flavor that's actually the absorbic acid in them i think it is and um, the tubers are actually um, harvested in the winter time you can see this uh, would like to be planted out um, the tubers are harvested in the winter time and they make for a really nice meal in new zealand these have actually pr replaced uh, the potatoes we'll check out our other videos on ochas uh, we have some harvest videos and some planting videos as well and here is another variety we have like 10 varieties of them at this stage um, really nice colors and a really tasty vegetable as well you can bake them in the oven just like a potato or if you, you can also boil them if you like and here is some more so we're going to try and find some space for all of these there are some more courgettes in the middle and a few broad beans that is the imperial lung pod that's the only one we could find last year we did the aqua dulce and i probably will go for that one again haven't tried this variety yet in our other garden the walled garden these have really taken off so we'll see how the harvest is we'll let you know so let's get to work and plant all of this over here into the new garden
Say onion sets. Onion sets. In case you were wondering how to plant ochre, it's really simple. We grow them in these trays sometimes when we have too many ochres. We simply um, turn them upside down. We uh, squeeze them out of, the, out of the tray and gently turn them upside down. And then we plant them. We just make a hole with our hands, place the ochre plant in there, and that's it. So here is an example of a bigger plant. Uh, this is a courgette plant. It's in a two liter container. It probably hasn't used up all of the space in the container yet, but we'll take a look. And it has indeed. As you can see, the root system has uh, very well developed. What we'll do now is we'll plant it actually on the edge here because this pat uh, to, towards my back here is actually um, a little bit bigger on purpose so we can plant uh, bigger plants on this side here. So we'll just put it here and we'll firm up the um, compost on the sides. And that's it. That's all there is to it. And we'll keep doing the same thing with all the rest of the plants. All the courgettes on the side here because they'll take up a fair bit of space. And of course the yacons, a couple of different varieties we have here. We'll plant them in different places in between as well. It's basically the same thing. I'll just show you one. Here's the label. That's a white yakon. It's actually our favorite. And you can see it has maxed out the root space. That was a one and a half liter pot actually. And we'll just plant one of those right here because they won't interfere too much with the uh, courgettes. Or is it called, in every other country in the world, it's actually called zucchini. Yeah, zucchini is actually the more common word for courgette plants. Here's another courgette. We'll plant this here. And that's it. It's, it really is that simple. Uh, hopefully the slugs won't get it. A um, few more yakons to do. The yakons actually grow tall and the courgettes grow wide, which is actually also part of the three sisters that the... Oh, thank you. The Three Sisters um, planting combination, which is just corn and beans and uh, squash, which basically uh, was uh, invented by the Native Americans in North America. And it still is the best combination and the most efficient one there is. Do yourself a favor and don't remove all the rocks from your garden, because as Sepp Holzer always used to say, even back in the 80s, uh, rocks actually benefit the garden. It's, you shouldn't be removing them all because they actually conserve heat. You can put them on the surface of the soil and they'll actually heat up during the day and they'll give off um, heat during the night time. And uh, that'll help the plants to grow and it'll extend the season. But most importantly, the mycelia um, from the mushrooms basically actually break down um, the rocks and take the minerals from the rocks and feed them to the plants. And this happens over time during a long period of time, even with annuals that does happen. And it's really important to keep some rocks in the soil. Don't remove all the rocks, please. So here's a lovely um, rosemary plant. So we grew these from cuttings only about a year and a half ago. So this is about a year and a half old now. And um, we'll make a little hole here. And just plant it. The beauty of using uh, no dig is, of course, we don't need to use uh, garden tools other than uh, a rake is the only garden tool we really need. But uh, you can see a lovely developed root system here. We disturb that just a little bit to encourage the roots to um, spread. And we just plop it in the hole and uh, cover it up. There you go should get some rosemary now for years to come. Take a look at how many pots and trays we used. That was a lot of plants. All right, so that's all of the um, pots and trays actually tidied up. And I'll show you what the garden looks like now that we have it all planted up and it's completely finished. And I'm sure it'll look very different in a couple of weeks time or even a couple of months time. And we'll give you updates on this um, as we go. Uh, so do subscribe if you want to see the updates and see things growing here. There's a lot of different vegetables here. Uh, a lot of them are root vegetables and some of them are 
for the winter as well, but also some fast growing stuff like radish and salad as well, and some herbs that are perennial. It rained last night and this morning, so the beds are lovely and dark now. So we get a nice contrast now. So there's 12 beds, as you've probably seen in previous in the previous video, and they look like pizza slices. So we decided to call the garden the pizza garden. Although when you look at it from a drone view, it kind of looks like a sun kind of radiating its rays from the middle. And uh, it's really handy for walking. You can go anywhere in the garden, any place, and any direction very quickly. I know it's not as efficient for space-wise as straight paths, but they're nice and it's a nice design. And we like the aesthetics of it as well as um, the functionality of it and there is plenty of growing space here I mean I'll go through these with you some lemon thyme here lemon thyme and we have some other herbs here rosemary which we grew from a cotton last year and here's some oregano that we grew from seed last year so these are all quite large plants so they'll take off quickly they're in two liter pots and um, we wanted to keep the herbs kind of up here, kind of closer to the house, uh, so we can um, kind of come here and actually pick them up and use them more often, rather than putting them at the very bottom of the garden, right down here. So we have some uh, ochres. You can see here, they look like um, clover. And uh, we have different varieties of those planted in different places. There's some more over there, I'll show you in a minute. And um, they're a really lovely fruit, a root vegetable in the sorrel family. And uh, we'll have them available actually as a, a seed, um, seed tubers as well on our website in November, from November onwards. These are actually Egyptian walking onions. They're only small yet, but uh, we're excited about those too. Uh, I won't actually tell you all about every single vegetable that we've planted here now because the video would be about an hour long. But if you have any questions, please do leave them in the comments. This is Waltham uh, broccoli. So this will actually form heads. I know they're a little uh, densely planted, um, but uh, that's for a good reason because some of them might not make it or some of them might get eaten by the slugs. We had that many available and we have no space to put them elsewhere, so we might as well plant them densely. This bed here is a bit more colour. Here is some um, courgette plants. We have That's actually diamond. I think that's a yellow variety. We have different varieties of courgettes actually. And um, these ones here are yacon. That's actually New Zealand red. And they, they'll grow giant leaves uh, as well as you'll have seen from the garden tour last year from the other garden. Um, these are more ochas. And here we have some ulucus. We have three different varieties of ulucus now. We only started getting those in um, this winter, or last winter. And um, they're a bit like a potato, very similar. They come from the same place in the Andes as well. And um, these are some leeks, blue leeks. And here we have some cauliflower. I find that the birds seem to love pulling out these uh, labels, you see. I think, they must think that the orange ones are warm or something when they're pulling them up. Uh, even at that now, they'll still pull that up eventually. So maybe it's actually used to pull, use those black labels that I actually got. Although they're kind of hard to read, but at least the birds won't see them. Even the blue ones, I don't see what they think of it. They must think it's food anyway. Um, these are some Canarian potatoes. You can see there is already a little flower here. These are lovely different, lovely color, like um, a, a pink purple. I'll show them to you when it com comes to harvest time. This is a bed of radish and self-branching celery. And here we have a lettuce variety sowed, and it's called year round. And this is another rosemary bush. Here we have some um, more yacon plants. This is a different variety now. And here's some more olocus. Oh, in this bed it's um, 
purple sprouting broccoli. The plants are only tiny yet. I'll try to show them to you here. I mean, the plants only came out of a tray and um, these are fennel. But don't worry, I think they'll take off very quickly. We're going to keep some of the fennels in the center of the bed deliberately to keep them as perennial plants to actually make tea from the leaves. And you don't actually have to collect the, the, um, the bulbs when they're ready. You can just let them, uh, let them be until next year and then they'll come back much stronger. We have a massive plant or like even a group of plants of fennel um, in our front garden and we're making tea from the fennel leaves all the time. And our little uh, baby boy Jacob actually likes to um, go into the garden and eat the fennel leaves too. Very soothing for the stomach and very good for you. And um, of course the birds pulled out that one too. Now, and we ran out of battery, so luckily I have a second battery. Um, so we have a few more ochas here. It's a different variety. These are pink and we have a purple variety too. Um, we have some... Uh, uh, very um, unusual looking ones too. They're actually from Poland, called Paskov. Um, I'll show you a picture of them here. They look like something from another planet. Uh, here's some purple potatoes. And here we have a whole bed full of uh, beetroots. It's actually a mix uh, that I got, a seed mix. Uh, we have um, a trellis here. This is like a, just a tripod connected at the top basically just hazel wood and uh, we did not actually poke the sticks down through the cardboard they're only going down in through the compost and into just onto the cardboard and we are using a counterweight this rock here on some wire this is quite heavy now this would be about seven or eight kilos and uh, it's kind of holding down the entire structure and it's brilliant it's actually it doesn't move and I don't think a wind is even going to blow it away and what's going to grow up them it's actually Apios tubers. These are also known as ground nut, and they're another one of those kind of uh, ancient edible tubers that are typically from South America, from the Andes, or Peru and Bolivia. And uh, you can see here, that's them. Now they'll, they'll grow a little bit longer and then we can trellis them up. They'll find their way. Um, we had some last year in the greenhouse and we only had just a few Apios tubers and we're trying to propagate them for you guys as well so um, hopefully we can share them out with you uh, at some point later this year when they have um, multiplied they're very expensive and very hard to get um, this uh, bed here is all red russian kale and some black tuscany or nero or dinosaur kale there's three different names for it actually and um, that one is a little bit more bitter. I find the red Russian kale is a little bit more palatable. But then there is the Portuguese kale, which is way better. That's actually this one here. We just stuck a couple of cuttings into the middle of each of these, this bed and this bed here. And hopefully they'll grow into big plants. Uh, hopefully not quite as big as the plant right here, because that grew to about uh, three square meters in, in about, actually three years, three square meters in three years as it happens and this is lemon thyme just here and this bed here is all onions um, Stuttgarter Riesen or Giants and we have Red Baron uh, so a couple of different uh, onion sets gone in there here is some broad beans as you can see them here and some oregano that we grew from a seed from seed um, here is another variety of courgette what variety is that uh, ambassador ambassador um, we also have some cauliflower in this bed as well uh, along the front here and on this side hopefully you enjoyed that process of how we made this little garden and hopefully it'll bring us many harvests so we can actually have something to film and um, actually give you some video updates in the coming months and even weeks and um, Hopefully you, it'll encourage you to do uh, start a garden yourself or even convert to no dig in your own garden. I tell you one thing now, it's so much less work and so much more enjoyable. You basically have about, you're down to 90% less weeding and that time freed up, you can actually spend uh, planting and harvesting instead and enjoying the garden. So 
Um, yeah, I'll give you guys a proper tour uh, another time. You can probably see the rest of the garden here in the background. And there's uh, the chickens are right here, right beside us with their chicken coop. And we have our other gardens up there too, the horseshoe garden, one of the projects on our website. We have a few little gardens and the long garden on the top. Here you can see we have planted a lot of other things, more perennials like um, red currant, black currant, um, typically stream white currant too, some um, Californian lilac, some whitey canisha, some wood mallow. This is wood mallow here. You can look at that for a flower. And it tastes delicious. Yeah, you can eat them and they're actually quite nice. And you can also eat the leaves as well. And um, probably one of the best salad leaves you can actually grow in cold tempered climates that's perennial. This plant is like only one year old now. We planted this last year as a small little plant in a two litre pot. And um, as you can see, it's already producing its own seeds. This one is known as Malva Silvestris, and um, the, the seeds actually come in a little, um, kind of like a wheel of cheese. That's why they call it, they call the seeds actually that, the cheese wheel seeds, and you can eat those too, and they're quite nice. So, um, some pear trees. Oh, I must give you guys here some curly willow, and here's a, a ginkgo tree. I mean, um, here's some josta berries. We're propagating that one like crazy this year and last year and strawberries that are grown on wood chips and chocolate mint and every other type of thing here. And right in the middle of it all, our pizza garden. It'll probably not be recognizable, well hopefully, um, it'll be full of vegetables uh, soon enough. If the birds don't pick out the labels too often, we'll even remember what we actually planted. But since we have a video now, we can also always look it up ourselves. Hope you enjoyed that and give us a thumbs up if you liked the video. It helps us out a lot and uh, please subscribe to us on YouTube as well and um, or on Facebook if you like but YouTube is even better because that's where we put out all our videos straight away and on our website as well. Thanks a million for watching and um, keep on gardening. Bye bye. I gotta show you guys a little trick. Just pick up. Good girl. Good girl.